Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you are well. I'm well, I'm really tired, but that's just because I've been juggling quite a lot of stuff at the moment, but I'm well. And I'm really happy because it's nearly done, the kitchen. By the end of this video, because I'm gonna film a little bit today and then finish tomorrow, by the end of this video, the kitchen will be done, it'll all be back in, and we can have a little play with staging, it's happened happening it will have happened um so just a quick word about the last video i do not know why the sound cut out i have no idea why i had sound when i was editing i had sound when i'd saved it i had sound before i transferred it to youtube don't know what happened one of the things i was mentioning which is relevant to where i'm at today is when I was pointing at the shelves at the bottom of the stairs, I was painting outside in the hallway. One of the things I had been saying in that was that even though I wasn't at the stage of painting woodwork in the kitchen, woodwork's always the last, isn't it? You do your ceilings, your walls, and then you do your woodwork, skirtings, architrave, door, what have you. Um, I, hadn't, I hadn't started on the woodwork yet, but I did start on the shelves really early because I wanted to make sure they had two coats. I wanted to make sure they had plenty of time to properly cure, as in properly dry, go hard, so I can put them back in because things are going to be standing on them. And the last thing I want is to put things on the shelf, especially some of the heavier bits, and then a week later, going to take one off and it's slightly stuck itself and pulls the paint off. So that's what I was talking about in the hall. Right, uh, a few facts and figures then. So it's taken three weeks. Ah! However, I would say it's taken more like about 10 days because there's been other stuff going on. I had a couple of days off because of, you know, flu, what have you, need, it doesn't matter. So it's taken about 10 days, which, you know what, that's fine. Uh, once upon a time I might have got it done quicker it doesn't matter it's done it, in terms of inconvenience well it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad you know um, once once I got to the painting once all the sanding was done and I was at the painting stage the entire kitchen was covered in plastic drip cloths so it's like okay I'm gonna have picnics every day now so you know bread and cheese in the living room that's fine um, so yeah, 10 days done. Cost in the end, I sat down and worked this out last night. I reckon 68 pounds in the end, six, eight. In dollars, that's 84, 84 dollars. So originally, remember I spent 116 quid, can't remember the dollar amount, 140. However, I've got one item over there to return, unused, I thought that might be the case. It was the thing for the, grout I had two didn't know which to use I chose the right one um, so there's an item going back and then there are items which I haven't used completely the oil the um, wall filler they'll kept be carried forward into my next property things which are reusable like the roller and the tra rollers and the tray obviously that's carried forward uh, so I've taken a little bit of the cost of those things to include this time but yeah 68 pounds to compare it's honestly it feels like a new kitchen and once everything's back it's really going to feel like a new kitchen 68 quid but a lot a lot of elbow work elbow grease um my upper body has had such a workout over these three weeks i feel like I feel like Popeye now, uh, but that's great. Yes, so good. Okay, so let's have a look at where I'm at um, so far. I've got two last jobs to do, which I'll explain. And also, the thing with my kitchen is um, all, the, all the appliances are integrated. So there's a high chance that when someone comes to view the flat, they're going to open cupboard doors. They're going to want to see where are the appliances, what are the appliances, how, you know, what condition are they in, that sort of thing. So I've scrubbed my cupboards like mad. And when you're doing your cupboards, don't forget, not just the front and the back, but the whole of the edge, especially the lowers, because when you open it, that top edge, it often gets a bit of a it can get drips and grubbiness, can't it, from where you... If, we, if you're like me when you're doing your prep, it's always tomato juice running down the counter. 
So all of that's been thoroughly cleaned. And then the cupboards, which don't have appliances but have stuff in, they've had a good tidy. Do you remember I mentioned the basket? I bought a basket for some of my clobber. So I'll show you that as well. Because, yeah, like I said, a viewer, um, I'm pretty sure will open all those cupboards. When they open them, I want them to think, oh, yeah, this is, this is a nice, tidy thing. It's, it's all about them imagining living here and thinking, oh, yeah, I can live here. Um, I will do the same with the wardrobe and the side section, which is all the shelves. It'll all get a lovely tidy. So, I mean, I keep it pretty tidy anyway. I'm a bit nerdy. I fold all my clothes properly. They're all in piles, you know, by colour. Uh, yeah, but that's a little thing as well to think about if you're selling is when you're sort of trying to clear your clutter away, you think, I want to sort of, you know, pare things down. I'm going to put it all in a cupboard. It's possible that your viewer will open the cupboard. So if you put it in a cupboard, put it in the cupboard neatly. Don't, don't have cupboards that you open and have tons of clobber falling on you because it sends that signal to the buyer that this home is too small, there's no storage, etc., etc. So get your cupboards, wardrobes, get it all dead tidy and pared down as much as possible uh, so it looks more spacious. Okay, let's go and have a look at the kitchen. Uh, and the last two jobs before tomorrow, in a few seconds on the video, we can get stuck into playing at staging. Oh, the best bit, surely. I've earned this bit. Yay. It's so very, very nearly there. Uh, it's late in the afternoon now, but in the morning, oh my goodness, it's, it feels so bright. And it feels big in here again. So obviously, the table is going to come back in here but nothing else not the freezer not the chest of drawers i've chopped tucked my chest of drawers under there actually so they're out of the way as much floor space as possible right my last two jobs of today are to buff all the tiles because there is still a tiny bit of grout on them but i'm pleased with the way they came up uh that was quite hard work well not mm, hard work, it was fiddly and laborious. I did it with the Grout Reviver, I think it's by Unibond. It's in a tube and basically it had two coats, it, it all had two coats, uh, which is great, but it, there's, a, there's a bit of mess either side of each grout line that needs cleaning off. Uh, that was the fiddly bit, but it's done, fab. Now, so I'm going to buff, 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 buff my tiles, get the oil on here tonight. This, I'm just looking through my viewfinder screen, it looks a different colour in real life, it looks paler in real life, but this is going to be oiled tonight, then after staging tomorrow, I'll take some of it back out, oil it again tomorrow night, and then it may need a third oiling, so that will be... Uh, you know, whenever, the, the next day. So yeah, everything, everything, all the woodwork, all freshened up. Hoorah, hoorah, hoorah. Cupboards absolutely scrub, scrub, scrubbed within an inch of their life. And what I was talking about with the, um, the tops of cuddle, cuddles, <laughs> cupboards, this is my freezer. Yeah, don't forget the top. I'd finished, I'd done the door. I went to get something out of the freezer and I was like, oh, Vivi, you've forgotten the tops tops and sides. The under the sink cover where I keep my cleaning stuff. You can see I've had a bit of a tidy up. I mean, I'd had a little bit of a tidy up anyway when I had the washing machine uh, repair or the washing machine replacement, but I saw looking much, yeah, it just looks nice and tidy and sort of welcoming. Is that the right word? I think it's welcoming. <laughs> oh, the other thing I'm delighted for is my kickboards are back. <laughs> the kickboards have been off for, oh gosh, six weeks? More than six weeks. It's since the end of February when I had the washing machine replacement. I thought, there's no point putting them back because I'm going to start the decorating. But yeah, it just finishes it off better, doesn't it? This other cupboard, this is the only other cupboard that's not an appliance. 
this has had a bit of a tidy as well and I was mentioning that there's some stuff that would normally live on the shelves that I'm not going to put back on the shelves so plates and bits in there food and then do you remember I was mentioning the that was the three pound the bargain basket so it's just got odds and ends little bits of like that's blades for my food processor there's my nutri bullet extra bits and bolts and my teeny tiny isn't that the cutest hold on a second you might not have seen this before isn't that the cutest little sauce pan you ever did see i use this for i mean it really is tiny but when i have frozen berries uh blackberries raspberries whatever if i want them on my porridge in the morning and i've forgotten to defrost or even when i've remembered to defrost just put a handful in there warm them through Sometimes a little teaspoon of honey, yum. It's such a fabulous, handy little size. Anyway, that now looks in there. So yeah, it's all, just get it looking really neat and tidy. Again, the spices, they were on my shelves, they're now tucked away. Good stuff. The boxing for the boiler, obviously that's been painted, as has, oh, that one up there. I haven't put this one back on properly because I need to take it off to do my oiling this afternoon, evening probably, it's getting on for evening. So yeah, um, that's how we look on Friday, late in the afternoon, the shelves waiting to be filled and staged. Oh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I'm so chuffed. And actually now everything's done, now the walls are white again and everything's looking clean and bright. I love the floor. The more I've been in here, um, the more I've fallen in love with it. This kind of lovely, reclaimed, duffed up, but I think actually gorgeous floor. Not too much, like, you know, wood and wood balanced with all the white and all the other stuff that's coming in here. That glass is out because once the Danish oil is on, <laughs> this is my treat I've been looking forward to. I'm going to have a beer. All right, so I'll see you all in a few minutes, but in, in real life, for me, it'll be tomorrow when we're getting this kitchen all tartified with bits and pieces. See you then. Hello again, lovely people. For me, it's the next day. Yay, staging day. You can see I've got some of the clobber out behind me. We'll go through that in a minute. Um, first of all, a couple of things. I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about the Grout Reviver in a second because I put a photograph of it on Facebook and Instagram last night. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. It's probably dust, it's still so dusty. Um, yeah, I put photographs and I got quite a lot of messages both on the pages and privately who were like, what did you use? It looks great. How did you do it? So I'm going to talk about that briefly in a second. But also, last night I didn't oil the counter. Um, it, yeah, it was getting a bit late. Everything that's come back into the kitchen has had to be cleaned and dusted. You know, it's, dust is everywhere. That's fine, it's not, you know, it's not a complaint. It's just that that took me a bit longer than I anticipated. Now, that bears <laughs> reference to what will happen later today. Back when I did the shopping for, uh, I did a video about the shopping I'd done for all this reno. And I was pointing at the shelves and talking about them and talking about staging. And I said at the time that for staging, it all needed to be pared down because it looked too cluttered, too higgledy piggledy. Put it away, stage it, and I'll show you that. And then put the staging away, get all my clobber back on there and live my life as normal until it comes to the moment when I go on the market and then take all my clobber off and put the staging back. However, in the meantime, I've decided, hang on, that's, I'm making too much work for myself. So the staging I put in today, it's gonna stay. It's gonna stay. And I will just adapt to my things being in a different place and all the stuff that I reach for on a daily basis up there some of it will be put away, so I'll just reach for it elsewhere. It may be that a few bits and pieces sneak back onto the shelves. Not too much, 
but the idea is get this done today and this is how it's going to stay now until I move. Having said that, whatever I stage on the actual counter today will be coming off after the video so that I can oil it this afternoon, this evening. I don't think I've got time to get two, I, mm, I could, I, I might have time to put two coats on today. Final coat tomorrow, done and then leave it a few days to just um, really dry out. It's, it's supposed to be dry within six hours, but touch, there's a difference between touch dry and putting things on it dry. So, good, that's clear, cleared up and out of the way. That's as much clearing it for me as for you. So yeah, whatever goes onto the shelves today, it's going to stay. Now back to the grout. This is the product I used. It's by Unibond. Sorry, was it Tracy in Texas? I said on Facebook it was in a cerise tube. It's not, it's a purple tube. Uh, I put it away, so I was just sort of doing it from memory. It's called uh, Triple Action. It, it, on my receipt it said Anti-Mold Grout Reviver. Now, I didn't choose it for the anti-mold properties. I've never had mold either in the kitchen or the bathroom. There's always a bit of a, a window either fully open or on the kind of vent settings. So there's always air moving. Uh, I don't really, you know, if, if I'm cooking and it's getting steamy in here, like if I'm doing water bath canning or in the past when I've done the um, skinning the tomatoes, when I've done boiling pans, I plunge for a minute and then into the ice bath. Yeah, there's tons of steam. All the windows are wide open, so I'm not having that warm, moist atmosphere in here. There's always air moving. So I didn't get it for that. I got it purely for the grout reviver bit. Now, do this carefully. So the application, because I know like Tracy had looked online and seen only pens. I've seen the pen ones too, but this has got a sponge applicator, and you see there's a little that little hole in the middle. That's where the grout comes out. So you, you very simply, you're, you're doing a slight squeeze and going down, 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 down. That's why it takes quite a while, because when you're doing, like when you're doing the, the horizontal line, it's one continuous with all the vertical lines individually. Um, it's had two applications, it needed two. But the fiddly bit is when you sort of at the start of a line and at the end of a line, you get a tiny bit of a splodge. And of course, on either side, so on the, the two sides of the tiles, you're getting a bit of a streak too. So uh, what I found, you kind of, you try something, you find the best way to do it, don't you? Was that I did all the verticals and I gave them time to dry before I did the horizontal because I didn't want to smudge the work I'd done on the verticals. So I did this over the course of about four days in the end. So I did my verticals, first coat, left them 24 hours, did the horizontals, left them 24 hours, did the verticals, left them 24 hours. Um, and what I found was, I'm just gonna put the cap on because I'm <laughs> nervous of squirting everywhere. With a wet, a damp sponge, the minute I'd done it, it was to very carefully get off the worst of the excess. On the packet it says, on the tube it says, leave the grout to dry for half an hour and then wipe off the excess. Well, I found that within half an hour, some of the excess had really, really dried onto the tiles, so I had to kind of chip it off, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. So getting the worst off as I went and then, after I'd done the whole lot and it was absolutely dry, then with my damp sponge going over the whole lot again because you're left with, because it's like grout, this stuff is, it's like grout, but it's a slightly runnier form, well it's quite a lot runnier than normal grout. So you can sense that sort of slightly gritty, powdery texture of it. Um, so once it had all dried really, really thoroughly, you could see when, when I was at an angle, you can't, I was kind of looking along the row, you can see where it's not shining. You can see where there's that powdery residue still on the tiles. So with the damp sponge, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it all off. Great. 
Um, and then it was still a bit dull streaky, so then all I've done is with a really old, I can't, it's not to hand, a really old cotton tea towel that's so soft because it's so old, just buffed, oh my goodness, buff, 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 I like polishing each tile. But as you can see over my shoulder, they've come out great. I'm really, really chuffed with it. Someone did <laughs> message me in question. She said, come on, baby, tell the truth. You got someone in to do it, didn't you? No, hand on heart. I did not have anyone in to do it. If you look close, if you're really close up, you'll see that was not a professional job. It's my job, but actually, I'm really pleased with the result looking over my shoulder. Okay, um, and oh sorry, I should have said that was £11 and I think, I've got a freezer bag, I'm paranoid about the end of it. The I think I've used about half of it. So, 4, 8, 12, 16, 16 metres horizontally, so it's um, about 30. I reckon it's done about 60 metres. It says it'll do 150 metres. Actually, that's about right then, isn't it? There's about half left, maybe bit more than half um, and it was 11 pounds so I think wow that's so if I've used let's say I've used five pounds worth five pounds to bring the tiles back great yeah I'm chuffed I didn't dare hope they'd turn out so well I honestly thought I was gonna have to get a pro in to take all the old grout out completely which is a horrible job it's a really horrible job and then re-grout and it would have cost me a couple of hundred quid I'm sure anyway so yeah a fiver tiles are back in action right uh, let's have a little look at the clobber I've got for staging and my thoughts on said clobber so I've pulled a few bits and pieces together to choose from I'm not necessarily going to use everything I've got here <clears throat> excuse me um, some of it's going to be for the shelves and oh, I have my little baby spider plant and some for the counter but I'm going to be choosing from and using I've got all the old uh, the lovely old kilner jars filled with my various beans and dried stuff I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit worried about putting them on they're going to go on that shelf because the glass and now they're filled they weigh a ton we'll see uh, I've got that lovely, I usually keep my, um, what do you call them, my supplements in here, my lovely little bread, uh, what do you call it, a little bread truck from France. I normally have it facing the other way though because there was a time I had it facing, sorry, noisy, clinky, clinky, I had it facing this way and someone said, is that all your pen medicine in there? <laughs> No, it's pound, it's pound for bread. You can see a little bit of a theme if I stand back a bit. <clears throat> in, in terms of colour, uh, let's go with colour first rather than texture. It's, it's mostly neutral. There's a sort of white and cream, creamy white, white, <laughs> cream, you know what I mean. And then, <clears throat> and then little pops of blue, different shades of blue, almost greeny blue and that one bit of purple. I'm going to talk about mismatching a bit more later on when this is all done. Um, it just so happens this is like this because blue is one of my favourite colours. So it's a happy accident that there is a sort of, there is a cohesiveness to all of this. So even though we're looking at different shapes, different textures, different materials, there is a sort of a cohesion with colour. I've got my lovely big um, oh, bit of ceramic there, now and where, that's my bread bin, obviously I've got my normal cups, glasses, my cutlery, bits and bobs, bowls, so I've, I've put all the dishes away in the cupboard as I showed you in that previous bit of video, but my goodness I love my bowls, I'm a bit of a bowl addict, <laughs> you can tell I'm a bowl addict, look more bowls there oh and like I said when when we come to when I've actually staged I'm going to talk about this whole color thing a bit more but yeah they're so they're so pretty I love this one that's for olives <laughs> this is a beautiful one this is from Liberty and they're all you know they're all old they're all um, they're second hand or their gifts this is a beautiful Emma Bridgewater 
So again, just picking up on that blue. That was from Mandy. Thank you, lovely. This is a sweet little bowl. It's got just a tiny little detail of the flowers in there. That's a calf kids and that was a breakfast set from my sister. This bowl I've had forever and ever and ever. This is my chocolate drinking bowl. <laughs> I like a lot of chocolate. Gosh, I've had that, I've probably had that 30 years. Teapot. Oh, this, I love this. This is my utensils jar. Oh, let's lift it. Oh, hold on, I need to put it down straight away because that is heavy. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Now, I wouldn't normally go for yellow. I'm not a massive fan of yellow, but it's so beautiful. It, actually, it was a gift from my sister. This is from a pottery that was based in her village. It's not there anymore, and I don't know if the woman who, the potter herself, I don't know if she set up business somewhere else, but it's gorgeous. And this, that is about 30 years old. So oh, that's gonna stay on the counter though. So yeah, there's, there's a chunk of ceramics, bit of glass, uh, you know, a bit of the old enamelware. I know what I'm going to do with that. Some jugs. And then I've got the sort of, some bits and bobs I've pulled in the more natural, uh, natural materials. Because where I've got this kind of wood, 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 I want to just introduce a little bit of wood or basketry up here so it just kind of continues it so it's we don't have this weird stark contrast between we're all wood down here and then suddenly it's all ceramic up there I think I'll just jar so I've got a couple of boxes to choose from this is my candle box I love it actually having it in here would be very sensible it's one of my granddad's old toolboxes and I think it was his dad's before him um, but that might you know, it might be too dark in here. So I've got another little box here. It needs a bit of a clean. I made this one myself. Look at that beautiful joint on the end. You can't see it on the inside because I decorated it with paper. Hang on, let's put that down. And then I've just pulled a few baskets as well. Ah, and a tea towel in a more sort of a neutral color way. I'll explain why I picked this one when I've done the staging. Yeah, so a few different baskets. Um, not quite, I don't think that will go on the shelf, but it might go on the counter. Oh, I love this one. This was from Richard and Paul. This sits in my sewing table normally, but it might be useful here. And then just towards the bottom, it's I've got no space. There's another one here. This has also got sewing bits. But what I'm thinking is, it might go, oh, <laughs> it's hard to show you, right, hang on, let's put that down, right on the top shelf. My thinking behind that is because, although my ceilings here are lower than the flats below, in a Victoria, for a new build, this would be normal ceiling height, but for an old building, it's quite low. So my the thinking about putting something tall up there is that, you know, as you come into the kitchen, it will help take your eye up and up and up, and it will just help it feel like there's a bit of height. I'm not sure. I'm going to have a play around. Then that lovely chocolate tin, my uh, chocolat Souchard tin, I checked on, on the underside of it last night for the use-by date, because it did have chocolates in it. It now has odds and ends of kitchen bits like my apple cora and my uh, vegetable peeler, my garlic press, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I tipped it up and looked last night and it was used by 2000. <laughs> so I must have bought that in 1999. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, there's, I, I haven't, the main point is I haven't bought anything for this staging. It's all going to be coming from what I already have. Um, what I'm growing on. I've brought in, it might not stay there, you're not going to see it against the light, but this is 
the lovely geranium, my white geranium. Oh, it's so pretty just arching across there. Uh, but I also have, when it comes to plants, so I didn't mean to pan you around so quickly, I also have this little lovely trio <coughs> from Heather. Isn't that lovely? So a snake plant, Christmas cactus, and a variegated spider, which, <laughs> it's got a baby spider on it, yay! Um, so they're actually, they, they need potting on, potting up individually. She's just put them all in there to get them through the post. Can you believe they came through the post? Well done with your wrapping, lovely. Uh, also, that bowl, that's actually a decorating bowl. They're just stood in that temporarily. So they may all stay in here. They may get spotted around the flat in other spotted, dotted. But first of all, I have to go down to the garden to get three pots for them. And then I'll find either suitable dishes to stand them on. Or I have been keeping a lookout in charity shops ever since I talked about taking that one off three weeks ago. I have been looking for a sort of nice ceramic or galvanised metal pots to put things in in here. So, woohoo, that's what I'm starting with. I'm going to have a happy half hour, if not more, now playing and arranging and then I'll have you back in here with me when I'm done to show you what I've done with the whole kitchen and maybe a little bit of rationale about it all too. So don't go too far, but I'll see you back here in just a couple of seconds. Yay! I think I'm done. So let's have a little, oh, let's have a little look at some details. Stepping back a bit, so look, even the bin, even the bin is a basket. I do love my baskets. Such lovely bright light in here today as well, but that of course gives us problems with filming because of that, the brightness in that window. Anyway, so my table and chairs. That's what I want to ah, so the first thing with my table is it's reinstated as a kitchen table which means it's got my food processor and my pans underneath some of my pans. It's kind of weird because this kitchen really is looking like how I had it when I first moved in here. No freezers, no excess stuff down there. So for example, when you walk in, it does, it just feels open and light and airy. And that's what I want for um, my purchaser to feel. And, you know, I, I, I doubt, <laughs> well, I don't know, but if a purchaser comes in who, I, I'm just imagining that it's not going to be someone who is trying to be self-sufficient and therefore needing a ton of freezers, but even if they do, they can put them in. The main thing is, this is a kitchen that can be, you can sit down to eat in it. You remember I told you this table extends, um, it's perfect for sitting out to eat. It's handy little spot for my uh, pans. You could use it as a bit of extra work, work surface if you wanted, although there's plenty of work surface in here. So coming on to what I was saying a bit earlier about color, that's actually my bathroom chair and it's gonna go back in the bathroom because the chair that was there broke, <laughs> broke beyond repair. So I am going to be on the lookout. I need another dining chair for myself, not for staging, uh, purely for myself, because at the moment I've got three chairs and that one is not comfortable to sit on for dinner. So if I've got four people here, we can't sit down to eat. When I get another chair, um, probably a wooden one, I will almost certainly paint it white. I think it's absolutely fine to have mismatched stuff so the chairs are completely different shape if they're the same colour. Being the same colour just kind of gives them a bit of harmony. It, sort of, it, it makes it look, it's sort of intentional. You could have all your chairs completely different colours, but I would suggest only if they're all exactly the same design. So if they're all identical, do them different colours because the identical shape will help pull it together. 
If they're different shapes, I would suggest stick to one colour. The other reason the bathroom chair isn't going to stay in here is because it's very duffed up. It's really chipped. The paint, I mean, it's, it's an old thing. And it's back to what I was saying about the duffed up floor. Having the duffed up floor, it looks fine. I mean, I love it. But if every other item of furniture was chipped and duffed up, it would just look really tatty and old. If everything else is immaculate and perfect, the floor is like, up. Oh, it's intentional. It's okay. So yeah, I will be looking for another chair and I will paint it white. Um, and back to that colour thing and the whole mismatched. I mean, none of my bolt not this one, I need to put this somewhere else, the wooden one, because it's not working with the oak. But, you know, my bowls, blue, green, blue, blue with green and a little bit of red. They, they work perfectly happily together because tonally with the colours, the colours are all, they're harmonious. Ah, and that's what I decided to do with this little basket. I thought that's perfect for my apples, isn't it? And again, it's a nice, the texture of the, weave against the wood works because it's a bit of a lighter colour it sits nicely on that oak yay loving it loving it loving it like I said you know some things will change this normally is my office so do I bring my computer back in here probably but then when it comes to staging computer away again this has got to be a kitchen that is for cooking and eating when I come to sell um Squash, yay. Don't know quite what to do yet about my burrito because that's such a mess. Maybe a little little stool in the corner for it. And, oh, what a treat. A little pop of colour. When I was working, I used to buy myself fresh flowers every single week. It was my sort of treat to myself for working. <laughs> uh, I haven't done that for a long time so this is a real treat for me but again when I come to stage I will have flowers around the flat because it's just it's cheerful isn't it and it's a little pop of colour in what is otherwise quite let's get away from that window because the light's playing havoc with the camera in what's quite a neutral colour wise it's quite a neutral kitchen so yeah when I come to stage whatever flowers I choose I will choose sort of yellows and reds and something really bright I've got my, as I mentioned the other day, I put my drawers under there, partly to make it all tidier, but also because these are these generic IKEA drawers. I mean, they're dead useful, but goodness me, they're boring, aren't they? They're in every, <laughs> in just about every home all over the world. So yeah, hide them away. I don't want this to look like a, an IKEA flat, because really, it's not. Having said that, the sink was from Ikea. Um, so in terms of the counter, trying to keep it clear, look, this is going to get a bit more cluttered over the coming days as I get back to cooking. Um, but when it comes to the actual staging, I'll pair it back down to this lot. Oh, pretty flower. Yeah, keeping it really simple in the kitchen, in the kitchen, on the counter. I've got those plants in the corner for now, sort of partly propping them up. I think the snake tongue, I think I will, when I pot it on, I think it might sit happily in this corner. Oh, my toaster. I need to bring my toaster back in. But it makes sense, toaster and bread bin. My cooking utensils have gone back there where they always are, and my oil, just because well, it's a neat corner for them. Also, I can then prop my rolling pin up in the corner. So I think one of the ideas with... Oh, so let me get right back. So I'm going to show you with sort of staging the counter is as well to, to let someone see that there is plenty of space for cooking, prep. And, you know, think about it. This flat, it's a studio. It's more than likely it's going to be a single person who buys it. Um, I don't think I could live here as a couple but yeah there's plenty of prep space and even if they are a couple well you know someone can be prepping and the other one can be sitting down having a glass of wine encouraging the cooking and then finally the shelves so you can see compared to how they were it's like I said it's much much pared down 
uh, just little, little tiny pops of colour, but all the colour, again, it's all kind of blending with everything else that's in the room. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not sure about the top shelf, that may change, for now, yeah, it's fine, so like, you can see this, the blue of the teapot handle, and the blue of the bowl, and the blue of the mug, that's all pulling together, and then the wood of the box, the, the weave of the basket, and the tones in the dried foods, let's come this way, uh, yeah, it, I think that all pulls together really nicely. The only thing I'm not sure about is my jug on the end because I think that end possibly needs a tiny bit of colour just to kind of, as a sort of, as a, blah, 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 can't get my words out, almost as a full stop on the end of that shelf. It might be that the pot and the jug are better swapped around but then I like this triangle of colour. That's a nice triangle of colour. Anyway, listen, <laughs> if I could get too much into this, uh, overthink it. Uh, and it really, 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 you know, I think as it is, coming into this kitchen, I think someone would think, yeah, this is this is a really nice place to cook, everything's to hand, and they can picture their stuff up there. Um, yeah, that's that's the idea is is letting someone know that this is a nice place to cook. It's a nice place to sit down and chat with friends or a friend in the kitchen whilst the cooking is going on. That's the bottom line, and ultimately that it's it's clean, it's tidy, it's well decorated. They can move in and they do not need to do a thing. Oh, good. I feel like I need a week off now. <laughs> I'm not going to get it because I now have to think about planting a garden, the jobs in the bathroom, and organising a painter to do the hallway because I am not going up the ladders in the hallway. So, yeah, I'm not going to have a week off. I am going to probably cool my boots a bit for the rest of today, obviously get this video edited but yeah otherwise I think I'm gonna have a little break today and then get straight back on with things <clears throat> tomorrow so my lovely friends thank you so much for hanging out with me for the last three weeks as I've done this kitchen up I hope maybe it's inspired you to do something in your home too and I hope Along the way, there have been a few hints and tips that uh, have been new to you that might be useful. And certainly from today's video, maybe just some decor and styling tips, especially sort of in terms of, you know, bringing colours together, bringing textures and shapes together. Yeah, I hope it's been useful. And if nothing else, I hope it's been fun to nosy at me doing my project. <laughs> all right, lovelies, I will see you all again really soon, I hope. Until then, cheerio.